Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Talk Elections. Today I am with the Honorable Sarah Gideon at the Harvard Kennedy School Institute of Politics. For the past semester, I've been working as the e-communications liaison for Sarah Gideon, and I could not be more happy to have her with us here today. So, Sarah, would you mind introducing yourself to the camera? <laughs> sure, first, good morning, Ethan. And hi, my name is Sarah Gideon. I am here as a fellow at the Institute of Politics at the Harvard Kennedy School, and it has been my distinct honor to have Ethan Kelly working with me, as well as six other amazing student liaisons during this program. Awesome, so just in your brief time here at the IOP, what was it like being uh, a fellow for this semester? Um, it was really one of the most special experiences of my life. So first of all, Ethan, I want to tell you, I remember the first time you and I met. It was actually my first night here and uh, the fellows participated in the JFK forum. And Ethan, you were one of the people who came up to me afterwards, introduced yourself. You had barely been at school as a first year for, for just a week or so. And then within a couple of days, we found out we'd be working together. Yeah, it was really awesome, yeah. So we have these events where people come and meet together. I think it's the JFK Forum's first event in a year and a half. So it was really nice uh, getting to see everyone for the first time. So um, we're going to get right into our question and answer. So the first one is a very big question. Why did you enter into politics in the first place? Oh, and I think it should be pretty interesting. <laughs> right. That is a big question. And uh, I guess there is a practical way to answer that question, but also sort of a, a deep uh, internal way to answer that question. So practically speaking, I became involved in politics and became an elected official because I came home one day and heard a message that somebody left on our answering machine asking my husband whether he would consider running for the town council. And as I've told the story many times before, when I heard that message, I thought, actually, I think that is the right job for me. But it's not just about getting that phone call. It is about that deeper internal why that you and the students and I have talked about so much. For me, uh, participating in community, looking around and lifting up people around me um, and really thinking about how we close the gap on the inequities that exist between us. Those are the things that keep me up at night, that get me excited in the morning to do work. And really at the end of the day, I think that's what public service is all about. Awesome. So you've risen to national attention over the 2020 Maine Senate race and serving as a state legislator, how have you been able to build your name idea during your campaign? How do you go from being the main speaker of the House to the Democratic nominee for United States Senate and have your name um, pretty well known across the entire state? Yeah, so that's a big project to say the least. Running for United States Senate um, requires so much of an individual and their family and their staff and community. For me, even though I had been House Speaker in the state of Maine and the State House of Representatives for a couple of years already, I think we estimated that my name ID was under 10%. Less than 10% of people knew who their House Speaker was, knew who I was, but more than 75% of voters had actually voted for Susan Collins in the past and that's who we were going up against. So we had an enormous task in front of us. And how did we gain name ID? A number of ways. And you know, one of the most important things, honestly, was that we were able to get up on TV early. And that is certainly, especially in a state like Maine, where you have an older population who really tunes into TV, of primary importance for us, as well as digital work. But most importantly, getting out on the campaign trail moving from community to community, meeting people literally where they live, where they work, and doing a lot of listening. This is taking a lot of time and effort. Okay, and back to something that you learned from the 2020 Senate election, what would you say is the biggest lesson you took away from running for statewide office? Yeah, so, you know, this is, uh, first, let me say, it was a challenging election also because we were in the time of COVID. So there was a degree to which we couldn't meet as many people. And when we did meet people, we had masks on and just a lot of complications like that. 
I think my biggest lesson actually goes back to something my dad always said to me, especially when I was involved in politics, when I first became House Speaker. He said to me, Sarah, just be yourself. Be yourself and everything will be okay and you will be able to do your work and, and get things really across the finish line eventually. Sometimes it takes a while. I think looking back on the Senate campaign, that would be my greatest advice to myself again. When you're running for office and running for an office that has such importance and has such a national eye on it, as well as the eyes of everybody in your state, you can sometimes err in being too careful and not allowing people to see all of you um, and who you truly are. And I think that is always a person's greatest strength. So that's one thing I would make sure that I was true to. And you mentioned COVID as a big part of the campaign and a different style of campaigning. How would you say the Senate campaign during the time of COVID was different than any other campaign you had ran in the past? Well, it was a different campaign for everybody running for any office um, across the entire country. And really, it was like, uh, it required writing a new playbook, I would say. Nobody had done anything like this before. And of course, making sure that we kept people safe was of primary importance um, at every juncture. So for us, where normally when you're on the campaign trail, you're able to freely move from place to place. There are an enormous number of events, which actually people are inviting you to, or you sort of are required to go to. And those things just didn't exist for us. We had to carefully curate and create um, events and stops and places for people to come and then make sure that all of those places were completely safe for people. Um, so there wasn't, for example, a parade. So we would create something called Suppers with Sarah, where we would move from community to community. We would actually serve um, beans and franks, a, a New England tradition. And we would invite all members from the community to come join us so that they would be able to meet me and I would be able to meet them. Nice. So in returning to your work as uh, the main speaker of the House of Representatives, was it difficult to sort of balance that while also running for office in the time that you co-served the two positions? Yeah, always. I, Ethan, this is a little bit funny, but I always say about life, whether it is work and parenting or running for Senate and being Speaker of the House and being a parent of teenagers, that balance is a verb. It's not a noun. In other words, in this case, it's not a state that you ever achieve and think, well, here I am. Great, things are going well. You are constantly balancing and recalibrating and making sure that you are just giving everything that you have to each of these things that are so important. It's not easy, but it is 100% worth it. Awesome. Yeah, so, and in my final question, there are a lot of people who are watching this video right now who are young people who are considering entering into politics. What advice would you give to the youth in America that are planning on running for office in the future? What would be your key, I guess, word of wisdom to them? Oh, I think, I may, I hope I don't have too many, but I think these are really important things to share. So, first of all, you have a place and a part in all of this. I always think it's not politics, it's actually your life. All of the things that are done in the political or electoral arena will actually impact everything that you care about. So it is your job to figure out what way you can take part. Maybe it's as an elected official and someone who runs for office. Maybe it's as a person who is a staff member in government somewhere. Maybe you're going to be part of a nonprofit organization. Maybe you want to be an activist. Maybe you're just going to make sure that you show up at the right times to testify at your town council or on a bill at your state legislature or in Congress. But these are really important ways for you to think about and understand that you are a part of the solution and for you to believe that you are going to create better solutions than the people before you. That's what I believe about all of you. 
And I think my parting words would just be to listen as much as you can, to have compassion for other people and imagine the place that they're coming from. Um, no matter how difficult your conversations are or how far apart it seems like you are. And always remember that there is another day to go back and try again. And sometimes it takes many tries to get something done um, or to make change, but change will happen with you at the helm. Thank you for that answer. Um, so that wraps up our interview. Thank you so much for being part of this today. Um, as someone who has been part of the IOP for a semester, both of us sharing the same length being here on campus, um, it's been an amazing experience. The Institute of Politics is absolutely a revolutionary, um, I guess, organization here, and I am so thankful that I've been able to meet you, and I'm very thankful that you were on here today. So, again, thanks for the fourth time. Uh, thank you so much, Ethan. Wait, Ethan, something does occur to me. Have we explained fully what the Institute of Politics is? I don't think so. Should we do that? Yeah, okay. So. The Institute of Politics is an organization here on campus. It's at the Kennedy School, um, but it primarily consists of undergraduate students who are, um, at least on the undergraduate side, that are focused on a bunch of different programs. I think there might be 10 or 12. Um, we are part of the Fellows and Study Groups, which is an organization within the Institute of Politics that has six fellows routinely that stay for a semester, and they hold study groups every single week um, in this room or another room. and. Uh, we talk about a bunch of different topics, and is there anything that I should add on to that? Well, I think that I would just add that some of the other areas outside of the fellowship study group include Harvard Votes Challenge, where students are out at registering people to vote and encouraging people to vote in a nonpartisan way. Um, there's a group that poll, a youth poll that is done out of the Institute of Politics, the only one in the country. Um, there are very focused groups in a number of different areas like policy and helping uh, students think about how to make policy and this fellows program really is aimed at making sure students have access to all of the different ways that you can participate in government by inviting fellows who have done a lot of different things, whether it's in the media, whether it is um, as an elected official in federal, local, or state government, whether it's organizing, and so on. Awesome, yeah. So, Institute of Politics, amazing place. Um, really thankful for everything that they have provided me with. So. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this interview. I'm very happy that you guys were here. So I wasn't able to do my traditional sign off where I asked you guys to watch a video or check out a playlist, but thank you guys again just so much for watching this video in the first place. This is the first interview that I've ever done on my YouTube channel when it comes down to interviewing people in the political arena. So it's really awesome that I was able to have this opportunity. Again, huge shout out to the Harvard Institute of Politics. This would not be possible without them. And I just wanted to say thank you guys so much because you guys are my biggest supporters and I will definitely be trying to do these in the future and I promise they will be a bit more refined when I go ahead and do that. So, bye guys.